Thank you, Pastor. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me. I'm looking to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. While you're turning, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. While you're turning, first of all, let me say, I am sorry I was scheduled to be here tomorrow night. I am sorry because of a conflict that I was not aware of, and please, I beg you to forgive me. Pastor, please, you've already said you had, and you'll let me come back some other time. Will you do that? Will you all let me come back again? You won't hold it against me. You don't mind. I appreciate it kindly, and it's not, believe me, it's not my plan at all. And uh, I will look forward to other opportunities to come back and be with you. Secondly, I get tired of these pastors with their humility, don't you? I thought Pastor did an excellent job on that song. I thought he's, I think he's a great singer, don't you? Is that what you want me to say? Is that what you're trying to get? Gee, I tell you what. Huh? All right. <laughs> John Lopez is a great man of God. You're so blessed. You know that, don't you? Do I have to say that to you? You know that. And you know how blessed you are to have such a great church. Let me tell you, folks. I go all over America. I travel all over America. I go to all kinds of churches. You're blessed. I said, you're blessed. Amen. Because you have an anointing. You have a touch. You have a presence. You have a power. You have a growth pattern. You have a progression that a lot of churches, a lot of churches are dying. I mean, they're dead. Graveyard dead. D-E-A-D. Dead. Ought to be buried. Anything's dead ought to be buried. Amen. I wonder sometimes why in the world they open the doors. Amen. But here there is excitement and there's progression and there's the joy of the Lord and there's the presence of God. And that's the way it ought to be. And I appreciate you so very much. Good to see some friends of mine, the Stones and the Cups, are with us tonight. I pastored them those two and a half years up the road of peace. I don't know if there's anybody else here, but if you're here, I saw them. But if anybody else is here, hello. God bless you. But I want, to, I want to talk tonight on a subject that I think is very pertinent for the day and hour in which we're living. Listen to me, everybody, and, and listen to what I'm fixing to tell you. We are at war. Oh, yes, Brother Brock, I know about Mr. Hussein. No, 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 I'm not talking about Saudi Arabia. That's in the hands and the plan of Almighty God. He's going to take care of Mr. Hussein just like he's taken care of, uh, took care of Mr. Uh, Khomeini and uh, Mr. Arafat and all of those gentlemen in the Middle East. God's got it all working according to his plan. But what I'm trying to get across to you tonight is that we are at war spiritually. We fight a constant war. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. You don't have to turn to it. Write it down, if you will. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things ye would. Now, Pastor, had you do this a moment ago, I'm going to ask you to do it again. Not to one another, but to yourself. Reach up and grab a hold of that stuff. Okay? That's your biggest problem. I'm not talking about your waistline. I'm talking about flesh. The true Greek translated, that verse translated in the true Greek, be constantly, and here again the emphasis is upon the Spirit, constantly conduct yourselves in the Spirit, meaning in the sphere of the Spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the cravings of the flesh. Why are we living in perilous times? Why are we living in days and hours when men are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God? It is a desire to fulfill the lust of the flesh. It is, it is a desire to fulfill the cravings of the flesh. Notice it. I'll go on. Verse 17, for the flesh has constantly a strong desire to suppress the spirit. And the spirit has a constant desire to suppress the flesh. These, listen now, and these, ladies and gentlemen, are entrenched in a permanent, permanent attitude of opposition to one another so that ye may not do the things ye would desire to do. 
The reason why you are oftentimes thwarted in, in your ambition to do the things of the Lord is because you let the flesh get in the way. Because the flesh suppresses the move of the Spirit. Now, Brother Brock, where is, what, what are you trying to say? Jesus said it best. Spirit's willing, flesh is weak. In fact, he emphasized to his disciples coming back that third time after he had woke them up three times. He came back to them the third time, or rather the second time. Let me put it together, the second time. He told them, he said, pray lest ye fall into temptation. The reason why he was emphasizing that thought, pray lest ye fall into temptation, is because he, the Son of God himself, had fallen into temptation. He was tempted to walk away from it all. He was tempted like the flesh tempting him not to die, not to go the way of the cross, to walk away from it all. Knowing and being aware of the temptation of the flesh, he emphasized to all the saints, pray lest ye fall into temptation because the Spirit's willing. But this flesh is weak. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the days and times and hours in which we're living, again, I emphasize we are at war. Satan is battling us on every side. The enemy is coming against us. It is imperative that you maintain the presence and the power of God in your life. It is imperative that you maintain the presence and the power of God in your life. Tonight in my message, I'm going to tell you how to maintain the presence of God in your life. There are five things found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's begin with verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. Wasn't it just a few months ago that we were just like on a honeymoon? The wall had come down in Berlin. Everybody was turning toward democracy. Mr. Gorbachev was releasing his strangle on Eastern Europe. Things looked so good, so promising, and then all of a sudden Saddam Hussein came along. Who in the world is Saddam Hussein? And now we're at a point of tension that it can erupt into a literal world war. Sudden, to just show you how quick it can be. We're in this atmosphere of a honeymoon of democracy, and then suddenly Saddam Hussein comes on the scene. That's what he's talking about. Suddenly, men will say peace and safety. Sudden destruction cometh upon us. For yourselves know perfectly. I, I like that. Grab a hold of that thought. For yourselves know perfectly. Verse 2, then verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. Everybody say darkness. Say it again, darkness. You are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all, everybody say all, all. Say it again, all. Children of light. Everyone say the word light, light. Say it again, light. I am not walking in darkness. I'm not fearful of Mr. Hussein. I'm not fearful of what's going on in the Middle East. It doesn't worry me about the economy. The oil crisis doesn't concern me. I'm not really frustrated about it all. Society is literally getting worse. It's going into hell, the hellish times in which we're living. They were all predicted by the Apostle Paul that in the last days perilous times will come. Men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The crack war, the cocaine war, the drug war, it is there. Nothing I can say, nothing that I can do can change it. And I got news for you. Mr. Bush, we have lost that war. If you think for one second we're winning the drug war, wake up. We're not. 
Anytime they can take four tons of cocaine off the streets of Los Angeles and the price of cocaine in Los Angeles doesn't rise one dime, we've lost the war. When they take five tons off the streets of New York and the cost of cocaine doesn't go up one dime, we've lost the war. Forget about winning the war on drugs because it's over. We lost it. Come on, amen. Let me tell you something. If you really want to win something, fill this church to capacity. If you really want to turn your family around, get them into the house of God. If you really want to do something for your life, get in tune with the Heavenly Father. Let the Holy Spirit dwell because I'm got, I got new. The only thing that's going to keep your children is the power of God in this day and hour in which we live in. You can say amen, oh me, whatever you want to say, but we are living in perilous times. Are you hearing me? But I'm not concerned about it. What do you mean you're not concerned? I am a child of the light. I can see what's going on. It's in accordance to the Word of God. All I know is it's just pushing us nearer and nearer and nearer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Seeing that day, being aware of that day, not walking in darkness, but walking in the light. Therefore, it is of major importance that we strive to keep the presence of God within our lives. Well, Brother Brock, I, I, I come to church. Ain't that what I'm supposed to do? Oh, that's just the start. Come on, amen. Well, I've been in the way for 40 years. Never were true words spoken. You've been in the way for 40 years. Well, I'm here, ain't I? And a whole lot more to keeping the presence of God in your life and just being here. Well, I've sung in this choir for 20 years. Wonderful. But it's a whole lot more than just singing in the choir. Well, I've played the piano. Wonderful. I've testified. I've given my tithes faithfully. Wonderful. I'm a part of this great church. Wonderful. But God doesn't respond to you because you're a part of this church because you sit on a pew, because you pay a dime, because you sing in the choir, because you play an instrument, because you preach a sermon, God responds to you because of one thing. How much faith have you got? Because when you generate the right kind of faith, no problem with you being in church. When you generate the right kind of faith, you'll always pay your tithe. Come on, saints. Shout amen, owe me, whatever. I believe that with all of my heart. If you've got the right kind of faith, you'll have the right kind of attitude toward one another. If you've got the right kind of progressive faith that you ought to have, not a faith that's simply occupying a little bit of space in your heart, but a faith that fills you from the top of your head to the soles of your, of your feet, you'll be a faithful choir member. You'll enjoy playing instruments. You'll enjoy the presence of God. Amen! Not only that, but you will strive to maintain His presence in your life by doing these five things. Verse 14, look with me, please. Now we exalt you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient. Number one, it's amazing how he started off with patience. Be patient toward all men. See then that none render, listen now, listen, listen carefully. See then that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Secondly, rejoice evermore. If you're going to maintain the presence of God, you've got to rejoice evermore. Pray, thirdly, without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Aren't you glad he said, in everything give thanks? He didn't say, for everything give thanks, did he? He said, in everything give thanks. Now, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell you this. God never anticipated, not, not, God never expected you to say, thank you, God, for this storm. Do you think God, John Loper, ever, ever wanted me to say, thank you, God, for my son being killed? No. No. Thank you, God, for that storm? No. Never told me to say, thank you for it. He said, thank me in the midst of it because I will keep my hand upon you and protect you through it all. Come on, amen. He never said he'd take us from the storm. He said, I'll take you through the storm so you can give me praise in the midst, in, in the midst, not for it, but in the midst of it. Somebody shout praise the Lord, amen. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Fourthly, quench not the Spirit. Don't do that. 
Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And lastly, abstain from all appearance of evil. Five things you must do to maintain God's presence in your life. If you're going to make it in the rapture, you're not going to make it just simply because you're occupying a pew. I know some saints, bless their hearts, when it comes to occupying a pew or occupying the concept of holiness. I was reared in a, a church that maintained that strict holiness attitude. I knew some ladies, their hair would drag the floor, their dresses a cup over their shoes, but their tongue would stretch from here to downtown Birmingham. But when it came to holiness, they were there. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not criticizing my elders. I love my elders, and I love my Pentecostal heritage. But you'd be surprised how many judges came out of that particular area. And please don't, don't misunderstand me. That's one thing I love about evangelism. I can say whatever I want to say, Pastor, because I leave tomorrow morning. You have to stay. Amen. But if there's anything that perturbs me, it's for some Pentecostal believer to look down his long nose. Well, let's see if he checks out all right. Let's, let's check her out, see if she, oh, I guess, okay. You're not my judge. God is my judge. Hello, amen. You can look at me any way you want to, but my Father is my judge. He knows me a whole lot better than you. Well, I don't like what you're saying. Well, God bless you. There'll be another evangelist here tomorrow night. Maybe you'll like what he's saying. But you better understand and realize that you've got to love me if you're going to get to heaven. Amen. You've got to love one another. You've got to be patient to one, toward one another. You've got to have the right kind of attitude. You've got to have the right kind of outlook. You've got to have the right approach to prayer. You've got to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in your life and by all means abstain from the very appearance of evil. Anything that adds to the lustfulness of your flesh, you've got to abstain from. Let's begin with number one. Be patient one toward another, toward all men. The Greek word used in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14, for patience denotes longanimity, a slowness to anger or passion. It is the opposite of the haste. It denotes the state of mind which can bear long when oppressed, provoked, or attacked. It is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. Walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. We should not be given to retaliation are driven to even the score when we feel we've been wrong. Someone has said, He who continually tries to get even will never get ahead. You don't know what they did to me, Brother Brock. If you only knew what they did to me, Brother Brock. If you could only understand what they did to me, Brother Brock. Then you'd know why I battle bitterness every day of my life, Brother Brock. Come on, amen. When I went to pastor my first church, I'd never pastored before in my life. I told my wife, I said, honey, don't worry. We get along with everybody. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I found one dear lady, I could not, I, whatever I did, there's still pain in my fifth rib where she would stab me every chance she got. Did you know what I did? You know what the, what the sign in sign language, you know, folks that are deaf, you know what the sign for gossip is? That's it. And that's what that lady was doing. And I, you know, I was just trying to be a good guy. What did I do? So I made a list. She did this, she did that, she did that. I called a friend of mine, Gene Rice, good brother. And I said, Gene, I've got a lady in my church, and I'm, I'm a new pastor, and I, I need him to give me some wisdom and strength how to handle this situation. And I said, Gene, this lady has done this, and this lady's done that. She's done this, done this, done that, done this. I said, Gene, what do you think I ought to do about it? He said, ignore her. Ignore her! You want me to ignore her? I want to kick her out the door. I'm going to take her before the board. I'm going to... Brock, Steve, listen. What? Have you prayed about it? Well, uh... No. You've not prayed about it? No. Pray about it. 
So I started praying. When I did, I began to see the lady as she was. Here was a dear soul who hated herself and wanted everybody to hate herself, hate themselves. Misery wants company. Hello, are you hearing what I'm saying? So I decided that the best way I could overcome her evil was with my good. So every time I saw her, I'd say, hello, I love you. Now, Brother Brock, that's being hypocritical. No, I knew how much I'd prayed over that lady. I knew whether I loved her or not. I said, dear lady, I love you. When she'd go out the door, I felt better as I did. She'd walk out the door coming out of church. I'd, love you. I'd be up preaching in the pulpit, and, and I'd be saying, oh, how God loves us. And I love all of you wonderful people. I especially love you. I'd see her in the mall. She'd be across, all the way across the mall. I'd say, I, I love you. One day she came out of church and I said, I love you. She said, Preacher, I can't handle this love. You're just killing me with this love, Preacher. I mean, you're just destroying me. And, and God worked a miracle. I saw God work a miracle. Oh, don't you love to just do that? Yeah, I do. Of course, I, I know, I, I heard the story one time of one fellow who had, was the meanest guy in his neighborhood. Meanest guy in his neighborhood. I mean, he was mean. He fought with every neighbor he had. One neighbor in particular, he fought with him all the time. And this old man got saved. And he listened to the preacher preach one Sunday morning, and the preacher said, Do good to them that hate you and say all manner of evil against you. Because when you do, you heap coals of fire upon their head. That brother went home and saw the other fellow had, had, it was gone. So he quickly got out, got on his lawnmower, and cut his grass. The fellow came in, saw his grass cut, it, cut had been cut. He went, and ev every neighbor in the neighborhood, Did you cut my grass? Mm, did you cut my grass? Mm. Finally, that, that guy had had the most trouble with, who had gotten saved. He went through, he knocked out, you cut my grass? Yes. Why did you cut my grass? He said, I got saved. He said, well, that's good. But why did you cut my grass? Because he said, the preacher said this morning, that when I do good to them that hate me and say all manner of evil against me, when I overcome their evil with my good, I heap coals of fire upon their head. And he said, brother, I hope God burns your brains out because I cut your grass. <laughs> it's not exactly what God was intending. What he is intending for us to understand, that he who continually tries to get even will never get ahead. Brother Brock, you don't know what they did. Doesn't matter what they did. Put it under the blood. I'm going to say that one more time. Put it under the blood. There are people that sit on this side because so-and-so sits on that side, and they'll go out that door so they don't have to go by that person out that door and feel sanctimonious about it. Well, I'm right. They're wrong. You're both wrong. Forgive Love. God gets no glory out of bickering among his saints. There is nothing more damaging. There is nothing more hellish. There is nothing that comes more from hell itself than brother and sister bickering with one another. There is nothing more hellish and demonic and a force literally to thwart the power and the presence of God you can literally bind up a choir, bind up a church, bind up giving, bind up the blessing of God by creating a faction here or an attitude there or a bickering there or an animosity there. And with this stupid attitude, I have a right. You never have a right. Let me tell you something. I flew into this city today, and as I flew into this city, my heart, broke because I remember this city my baby my baby my David my David was alive when when I was in this city and, and, and I look 
even looked at the roads that I would travel. And I remember the roads and thinking about being with my baby. If it wasn't for God, Randall, I would be drunk and dead in bitterness right now. I'd have my bottom lip stuck out like a back porch. But I am not going to let some stupid demon from hell infiltrate my finite fleshy mind with a stupid attitude of bitterness and pointing my finger at other people saying it's their fault because I'm where I'm at or, or why did God do this or why me God uh -uh. greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that has come against me do you think I'm going to harm the memory of my blessed little boy, David, my son? You think I'm going to harm his memory by sitting on a pew and losing my soul and my relationship with God? No, sir, my friend. My salvation is like a pearl of great price. It's worth a whole lot more to me than some little bickering that I'm having with some brother or sister. And I got news for you. You ain't going to go to heaven unless you forgive one another. No, 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 wait a minute, preacher. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I have a... Now, go back to that. I have a right. Wait a minute, I, I, I come to church. I, I pay my tithes. I, I do this, I do that. How can a man say he loves God and he, whom he has never seen and hate his brother who he sees every day? If we harbor unforgiveness, he said, if you will not forgive, I won't forgive you. I think that becomes number one, doesn't it? Above money. Well, God needs my money, honey. He's got the cattle of a thousand hills, the keys to the universal. You don't give it, he'll get somebody else at will. I get amused at these people. You, you better pray for me. I'm feeling a mean streak coming right now. They come in and sit on your pew. I got money, preacher. I got money. Now, you do this, and I'll pay this whole thing off. I'm preaching it, brother. You hang on. Usually his wife is obese, and she's really the power behind the throne. You go tell him what I said. That's good preaching if I say so myself. God ain't in a million miles of that, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, God is not money. Did you hear what I said? God is not money. God is not a musical voice. I've heard people stand in pulpits and sing, Oh, great I am oh, thou art. I tell you, I'm stirred. My heart is stirred. I've been stirred for the last few months. I want to rip me apart. I want to fall before God. I want God to touch me. We are nearing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. These little petty feelings, these impatient attitudes that we have. Well, I'm just the kind of a person that speaks their peace. I say what I want to say, irregardless of what it hurts or who it hurts. I got news for you, sir. God ain't a million miles of that. Change. I can't change. That's the way I've always been. When you're negating the spirit and the presence and the power of God in your life, he will never abide in an attitude like that. Do you wonder why, if you're of that attitude, do you wonder why people, when you come into their presence, tense up and try to get away from you? Because they don't know what you're going to say. Come on, amen. They don't know what you're going to say. Come on, amen. This is preaching. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing you my heart. I'm talking about having the presence of God in your life. My life is not built around personalities, individuals. It's not built around me. It's about Him. He, I must decrease. He must increase. I'm a failure unless he touches me. I'm a phony. I'm an absolute phony unless his spirit moves up and down the avenues of my soul and anoints my tongue and it becomes an oracle of God. I'm an absolute phony. I'm a farce. 
simply standing here singing a song. Jim does nothing. I'm a phony. All I'm doing is making melody unless his anointing flows through me. And the only way that I can keep that anointing flowing through me is if I have a good attitude toward my brother and toward my sister. Or have you never been hurt before? Sure. Have you never had anybody to let you down? Sure. Have you ever had anybody to, to really get you upset? Sure. How do you handle it? Only by the grace of God. Don't put super Christian on me. I fight hell just like you fight it. I fight hurt just like you hurt. You hurt. I battle just like you battle. But I'm here to tell you again on the authority of what I've been through in my life. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world that comes to rip me apart and destroy my relationship with the Father. Somebody clap your hands and shout praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, help me to preach this message, Lord, like I feel it upon my soul. Remember that when we lose patience with an individual, we also lose our influence upon them. You destroy it within an instant of a few words. An unguarded word. An attitude exposed. I just can't forgive Then you're negating the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. You don't know what my dad did to me, Brother Brock. No, I don't. But I know a God that can wrap you in his love. You don't know what my brother and my sister did to me. No, I don't. But I know a God that can wrap you in his love. I was reared with a brother. My brother and I started the ministry together. We were the Brock brothers. Maybe you've heard of us. He preached, I sang. We had a revival here in Birmingham over the old South Park Church of God. Lasted six weeks, almost six weeks. Hundreds would say, many received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Great, great revival. But I watched that same brother deteriorate his life literally before my eyes, lose his touch with God, become addicted to drugs, later alcohol, divorce his wife, lose his children. I know what it is to walk into a cell, into a, prison, into a jail. I know what it is to walk into a jail, see my brother who I'd preached with and prayed with and sung with, sitting there in that cell with a cigarette in his mouth and when he see me coming in through the door pull it out of his mouth and began cursing me for everything I was worth telling me don't make me an illustration Steve don't make me one of your illustrations with another curse and another curse and another curse you talk about hurt when I walked out of that, that cell I put my hand against a brick wall until it bled I was so angry how can he hurt me like that? How can he do me that way? Feel the pain and feel the anxiety. But I'm here to tell you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is the power of the whole of the I feel him and I feel him because I can tell you right now that same brother I saw him just a few months ago he's back in with God he's full of the spirit he's preaching the gospel again hallelujah why because of the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit oh there's been times there's been moments of anxiety there's been times of anger there's been times of lost patience there's been times of mistrust there's been times of hurt but I deny the power oh hallelujah I deny the power of hell and I deny the force of hell the devil is a liar he can't take you he can't destroy you whatever he is he is flaunting before you with his force of enemy he's a liar amen glory to God the Holy Ghost the power of God can stir you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet that the enemy cannot put his clammy hands against you nor your family amen You'll maintain that right attitude before him. Because I got news for you. Not only will, the, will, will you curse yourself, you will curse your children. 
you will drive it into your children. Friend, you can talk about molesters all you want to, but I think that a, a mother, a dad who becomes embittered and sits upon a pew and sticks their bottom lip out like a back porch and finds fault with everybody and goes home and spills over that bitterness at their dinner table around their children. And then later on, you know, a real change come into their life, but you look for their children and you can't find them anywhere. That's as bad as any molester in this society. I know that's strong, but I'm telling you, you're molesting them spiritually. You're literally molesting them spiritually with your words. In the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And the only words they hear is your words. The only words they attune to is the words you speak. How much better is it, my friend, than to sit by your child? Them knowing that someone has done you wrong. And them look at you and say, Dad, they did this. Or Mom, they did that. And for you to say, Yes, hon, but I love them. And God will take care of them. And then to watch God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, turn that hurtful, painful situation around to where that same child can see mom or dad wrapping their arms around that hurtful situation and forgiveness flow freely and they understand the true meaning of the word forgive rather than you turn your back and walk out the door and say I'll never go back again I'll never this I'll never that that's perfect go ahead tell them that's super the word never is implanted into their minds and all you are doing is inviting the devil in for whenever you say never and whenever you say I hold them in jeopardy or I hold them in enmity I hold them in distrust I will not forgive them you sever the covenant with God and you actually invite the devil into your relationship with the father as well as your family amen amen I had no intentions of of hanging so long on this particular point but pastor for I'm a, I'm a man of the Holy Spirit I, I, I'm led of God I want to be broken before him I, you got to rejoice evermore but I just can't feel right now I, you know what I feel like doing I feel like praying Preacher, this is wow, this is crazy. Hey, this is God. I don't think I've ever, I don't care, it doesn't matter. I don't think I've ever preached like this either. You may have never been in a service like this. I don't think I ever have either. But I got news for you. This is God, what we're feeling. Because I feel like kicking the devil real good, don't you? How many feel like kicking the devil real good? Do you feel like kicking the devil real good? How many feel that way? Raise up your hand way high. Raise it up high. I want to see it. Raise that other hand. Yeah, I feel like it, Brother Brock. What better way to kick him than to pour out before the Father, than to let the Holy Spirit begin to surge through your being to the point and place that forgiveness begins to flow freely through you, that the joy of the Lord begins to overcome your bitterness, a lot of times the reason why we face the enemies of our souls and we are in need is because we have not sacrificed ourselves as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto him we haven't put everything under the blood what was that song lead me Lord I follow Everywhere you open up the door. <sighs>
Join hands. Come to the instruments. I'm through preaching. Where's your words at? Play that song. Day star shine down on me. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Cherished of ten thousand, make me a reflection of your light. Day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow. Anywhere you open up the door. <laughs> let me know you. Show me things I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be a witness. You can take what's wrong and make it right. Day stars shine down on me. Let your love shine through me. Listen to this. Lord, I see a world that's dying. Wounded by the master of deceit. <laughs> Groping in the darkness. Haunted by the years of past defeat. But then I... <laughs> but then I see you standing near me. Shining with compassion in your eyes. Jesus, shine down on me. <laughs> Let your love shine through me in the night. Not my second. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow Anywhere you open up the door Let me know your wisdom Show me things I've never seen before to be a witness <laughs> why you can make everything that's wrong turn out right day stars shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night let me sing that last second verse one more time I feel God in all my sarayah. Day star shine down on me. Let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see a family dying. Wounded by the master of deceit. He's deceived you. Groping in the darkness. Haunted by the years of past defeat. If you'll just let him. If you'll just let him. But I see you standing, standing near me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shining with compassion in your eyes. Jesus. Let your love shine through me. In the night, stand to your feet with me, and I want you to lift your hands and let this be your prayer. Come on, lift your hands to Him. Lord, me, Lord, I follow anywhere You open up the door in my life. Show me. 
me things I've never seen before Lord, I want to be your witness You can take what's wrong and make it right Day stars shine down on me Let your love shine through me in the night I want you with your hands just lifted before the Father for a few moments. I want you to just begin worshiping Him. Come on, right now, just right where you are, just begin worshiping Him. Worship Him now. Come on, worship Him. Worship the Lord. Center your mind on Him because God's going to move into this house. Pastor, I feel like there's going to be deliverance. I feel like chains are going to be broken. I feel like families are going to be stirred. I feel like hearts are going to be challenged. Give me the key of B-flat, will you please? And I want you to sing this song with me. B-flat, sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless this man. Come and stand with me, my brother. Stand with your family here. Yes. Hallelujah. Look at this. Days on end, saith the Lord, I have sought to bless you. Days on end, I have sought to touch you. Keep playing. Don't stop it. The Spirit is moving. I have sought to change you. But you won't listen to me. You listen only to your flesh and to yourself. You hear only what the flesh has to say. And, and I, the Lord God, and my Spirit, and all the power of heaven cannot penetrate you because you see only what your flesh sees. You will, not, you will not catch the vision that I desire to, to reveal before you and, and to show you what a mighty individual you can be for my honor and for my glory because you see only what the flesh sees. Hear me, saith the Lord, cast it down. Crucify it. Walk away from it. For it will be that flesh that will destroy your children. It will be that flesh that will destroy your home. It will be that flesh that will destroy your relationship with me, saith the Lord. Heed my voice. Obey me. Obey me. Obey me. Now I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you. There's some of you that God has spoken to individually. And he is telling you to come back to him and repent. 
You've harbored some feelings in your heart. You've let the enemy destroy you with those feelings, separate you from God. You've, you've caused some, it's caused bitterness to come into your heart. You're not where you once was with the Father. There is some unforgiveness there. And the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, get it under the blood tonight. If nothing else happens in this camp meeting, God brought me here tonight to preach this message, what I'm sharing to somebody in this audience. And I'm going to tell you something. Never in my life have I ever had such a greater anointing than I've had tonight. I have preached under the anointing. But let me tell you also, it takes a great anointing to break the yoke of the flesh that controls an individual and severs the touch of God upon them. In the name of Jesus, as we sing it together and as the Spirit moves, heads bowed, eyes closed. Ladies and gentlemen, sing it with your eyes closed. Sing it so the anointing can flow. See, the anointing wants to flow. I want no one moving, no one leaving. Dear God, if there's anything, don't leave. Don't interrupt the flow, children. Be still. Mom, keep your children still. Dad, keep the kids still. No one moving. But I want us to sing it. And as we sing it, if the Holy Ghost, and I, it's not if, since the Holy Ghost, let me put it that way, since the Holy Ghost has spoke to you directly, get out from your seat right now as we sing. Hallelujah. I'm ready to break the yoke, Brother Brock. I'm ready to break that yoke that the devil's put on me. It's interrupted the flow of God in my life, and I know it. I know it. And I'm ready to break the yoke. I'm ready to break the yoke. The enemy has bound me with it, and I'm tired of it. In the name of Jesus, get out from your seat. God's going to set you free right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. I'm waiting on you. Ah, Holy Ghost, move. Keep your heads bowed. No one's speaking. Please, just singing this song. I want the anointing to flow. I want the anointing to flow. Devil in hell, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Come on, right now. There are others. They're not all here, and I know it. Come on, right now. Come on, right now, right now, right now. It may be in your family. You may have a problem in your family that you can't get forgiveness over. You, you can't just find the forgiveness in your heart. Maybe you were molested by your dad or your grandfather. I had a minister friend of mine to tell me that his dad molested his daughter. And he was tearing him apart. And I cried with him. I remember I cried with him. I cried with him until he could get to the place he could forgive. Because it was severing his relationship with God. Don't, don't stand back. God's moving in this house. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. In the name of Jesus, heads bowed, eyes closed. Please keep singing. Holy Ghost, anoint us. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, I'm waiting. Come on, I'm waiting. There are others quickly. There are others. There are others. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, yes, come on, right now, I'm ready to get it under the blood, come on, come on, we're going to get it under the blood tonight, I'm going to pray for you and the Holy Ghost is going to come on you, come on, right now. That's the best place you can come to. For he takes away the guilt through the presence and the anointing of the Spirit. Come on! Let's break the yoke! Let's get it out of here! Hallelujah! Let's get it off of your back. Let's get deliverance in the name of Jesus. Come on! Keep coming. Keep coming. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Saints still worshiping. Saints still worshiping.
too long already as it is. One minute more. I start that minute right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, raise your right hand and pray. God, bring everybody to this altar that needs to come. Raise that right hand. Pray that prayer with me. And I'm going to wait one minute more. 45 seconds. I'm going to close. Keep singing if you will. Let the spirit move. 45 seconds. I will close. 35 seconds. I'm closing. In 30 seconds. I'm closing. This is your one opportunity. I mean, this is a major opportunity. Because I don't think I've ever been in a service quite like that. I had no intentions. But this is a major opportunity. In 15 seconds, I'm closing. I won't wait no more. 15 more seconds. Get out from your seat. Come and kneel around these, will you? Come. We need some altar workers. Come and gather around these. I want to pray with them. I want to get down here with them. I want to pray for them. I want to pray with them. I want to believe God with them. You that are in this altar, lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands to Jesus. Just lift up your hands to Jesus. 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 Up hands to Jesus. Come on. Gather in. Gather in. forgiveness and I want total freedom tonight 
I want you to stand. Every one of you that are in this altar and you're of that particular attitude, stand to your feet right now in the name of Christ. Right now, right now in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. The devil is a liar and God's going to set every one of you free tonight. How many believes God can set every one of these people free tonight? How many believes that God can set every one of these people free tonight? Shout amen, will you? I want to come down this line. I want to come down this altar, and I want to pray for every one of you. I'm going to pray an anointing will fly. I feel, and I felt that in my spirit. I felt this anointing to preach this message. And in feeling the anointing to preach the message, I feel the anointing to lay my hands upon you in deliverance too. My brother, the Holy Spirit is spikara. Spikitiro moshekere. Spikarura masara. For the enemy has come against you and deceived you. The enemy has blinded you as a person who is blind physically, but you have been blind spiritually, saith the Lord. You have allowed the enemy to infiltrate your mind and your ears and your heart. But my spirit of anointing is upon you. I never lost my love for you. I never lost my caring for you. And I have brought you here to deliver you, saith the Lord. For when my spirit comes upon you, the load will be lifted. Believeth thou this? Then respond to me, saith the Lord. Raise your hands to him, my brother. Raise both of your hands to him right now. Close your eyes. Talk to the Father. Tell him right now, Father, say it with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender to you. Pastor, would you give me some anointing oil? Malamasere. Come on, saints, pray with me. I want to fight the devil tonight. Anybody want to fight the devil with me tonight? Anybody want to lick the devil tonight? You ready to lick the devil, my brother? Pastor, I need you to stand right here and help me pray. I'm anointing my hands with oil. Now, this, there's, no, there's no power in this oil, brother. All this oil is is an anointing. It's a, it's a significance of an anointing that's going to flow on you right now. I rebuke the devil. I rebuke the devil. Mm. Oh, I felt it. Jesus. Deliver him, Holy Spirit. Touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. In my spirit, my brother, I'm feeling in my heart that you should just put that before you. In your eyes, put it before you. What you've been battling, put it before you. Put it before you right now. Eyes closed. And say right now, I forgive. And I give it to you, Father. You feel that load lifting? It's lifting, isn't it? <laughs> it's lifting, isn't it? Come on, Ted. Begin praising the Lord now with me. Hallelujah. Come on, begin praising. There, there's the Holy Spirit. God, it's in your hand. It's in your hands. Come on, somebody shout, praise the Lord with me. Somebody shout, praise the Lord with me. Darling, raise your hands to Jesus with me, honey. God's ministering to your life right now. Father, I anoint her with oil. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit rest upon her. Right now, in the name of Jesus, let your anointing flow. For I am the I am the For I am the For I am the Lord thy God. I have heard your prayer. You've called upon me in the midnight hour. The enemy has come and blinded you in times, and you have thought to yourself, I'm alone, God's not near me. But my child, in those moments when you thought I wasn't near, my hand was shaking. I was just a nickel prayer, just a whisper in it all. I'm just a whisper away. Hallelujah. Woo! Raise your hands, lady. Sister Brenda, look at me. My 
I have a word from the Lord for you. As you sat here before me, I saw you. As you sat here before me, I understood you. Saith the Lord. Thy commitment has been great. And thou hast been faithful unto me, saith the Lord. The enemy has come against you in many ways, but he's a liar. He is a liar. My child, I have never allowed your foot to hit against a stone and stumble. But I have kept you in the palm of my hand and etched you there. And the enemy that has come against you in these forces and in these ways to challenge your mind and make you think I'm alone. But I'm I, he is a liar. And my spirit rest upon you, saith the Lord. I shall take that heartache away. <laughs> Raise your hands, darling. God's touching you right now. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is on you right now. You know what I see? It? Oh, yeah. Raise your hands. Cheryl, let me tell you something. Now listen to me carefully what I'm going to tell you. You came here last night, you walked away, but those devils are still all about you. The Holy Spirit, as Pastor was relating to me your story, the Holy Spirit said the devils are still all about her. The devils are still all about her. But dear lady, the devils are stomped down through praise. The devils are stomped down through the anointing. And that anointing is in my hand right now. When I touch you, ha, sha, sha. Hey! Woo! <laughs> devils leave. Devils, come on, somebody pray with me in this house. Devils, you walk away from her. You cannot have her. She is free. In the name of Jesus, she is free. There it is, sir. There it is. I saw, I saw a light just come down upon you. Devils are gone. You're free, lady. Stand here, my brother. The Lord's touching you now. Raise up your hands to Jesus. For the Spirit would say to you, you are free. The doubt that I'm mine. Devils really battled you in some things. There's some attitudes that the enemy has tried to infiltrate in your mind. Some people have hurt you. There has been some distrust. There's been some distrust that's come up. It's hard for you to trust people. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I right? I'm not a psychic. I'm just trying to be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't look at me to be able to tell you your name, where you live. I'm not that. No. But I, I see that in my spirit and I feel that in my heart. You know what the Holy Spirit is telling me? The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, trust Him. Trust Him. People will fail you. He who is the greatest, the great I am, will never fail you. He'll restore the joy. There's some joy that seeped out of you. There once was a better joy than there is right now. There once was a greater fervor to live for God than there is right now. 
In fact, you've really been battling in that area. Am I right? You believe God can touch you? Raise your hands to Him. Somebody pray with me. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Pastor, lay your hand on Him. The deliverance is coming through you. That anointing is coming through you, Pastor. That's Him, my sister. Stand here. Wrap your arms around Him. You feel that burden for Him. My brother, God's healing Him. out of your seat. 